Thank you. Hi. Um, just to kind of combine both of the subjects of your presentation, yes. I wondered, will we ever see EV, um, sorry, solar panels on EVs? Come again, say that again? Will we ever see solar panels on EVs? If so, um, why? Uh, will we see solar panels on EV? Yeah, I mean, some cars already have solar panels. Um, and uh, the thing about solar um, is that the density of solar is, is uh, solar panels today is not enough to fully charge it. Uh, so what we're going to see, yes, we, we already have solar panels. Uh, what we're going to see more is solar parking lots uh, where you can come in and charge directly from the sunshine to the car. And in fact, we're already starting to see that a lot. Um, and, but think about this. The marginal cost of solar generation is zero, right? Because once you have the solar panel, you have to you have zero cost, just like a digital camera. So when you charge your electric vehicle directly with solar, what is the cost per mile of driving that vehicle? Zero, right? Imagine that disruption. Um, boy, exciting, isn't it? Um, yeah, but we're already seeing that uh, those cars actually. Great. Last question. The guy at the back has the microphone. Hi there. Um, I was wondering what your, you think the implications for transmission and distribution networks are. On the one hand, we hear some people talking about the death spiral and people disconnecting from the grid. On the other yes. hand, we hear people say that um, uh, electric vehicles are going to be the savior of the grid and uh, people are going to charge their cars from utility scale wind. I was just wondering what your, your views are on, on the future of the grid. Um, so think of the, the new grid, what I call electricity 2.0, uh, more as an internet than as the existing grid. So what the winning business models are going to be um, are not clear, just like the winning business models for the internet 20 years ago were not clear. What, were clear, what was clear, at least to me, is that, that the internet was going to grow 100x. Um, and, and, um, but it's going to be distributed. That's clear. Uh, it's going to be uh, customer-centric rather than asset-centric. Uh, that's pretty clear. Um, you know, intelligence is going to be at the edges and at the center. So the grid is going to have to be more like a network where everybody, where you have to assume that everybody is generating and storing and selling to their neighbors, to someone down the street, to someone, you know, two blocks away. Um, so the, 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 the grid operators are going to have to be more of a knowledge-based industry, are going to have to be more like an Uber, which manages other people's assets, not its own, more like Google, which manages other people's computers, not its own. Um, so that's going to be essentially the new grid. It's going to be a many-to-many -many, uh, rather than you know, a one-way kind of connection which business models are going to win. Um, you know, you need to get in there and make all of this happen uh, and innovate, just like the rest of us have, you know, innovated on the internet and this and that. Not all of the business models are not clear. What is clear is that the technologies are going to take us there, right? So, like I said, business model innovation is going to be every bit as important as technology innovation. My advice is get in there. Get in there, right, and start experimenting and start playing and put up storage at people's homes and, uh, you know, at the block level and at the city level and at all levels because this is going to be like the Internet itself. You know, we have cell phones and we have laptops and we have, you know, work computers and we have massive data centers, but it's a network. It's a many-to-many -many network. That's the way the grid is going to be. So the companies that can manage that are going to be the companies that, you know, essentially, uh, you know, make the big bucks in the future. And there's a lot to be made. And, you know, data, by the way, is going to be every bit as important as electricity itself. So data about electricity is going to be every bit as important as electricity itself, just as data about money is maybe even more important than money itself or in other industries. Uh, so it's going to be more of a knowledge company than an asset management company. 
So it's all going to be easy. Utility companies just need to be a little bit more like Google and Uber than they are at the moment. So no problems there, Piece of boys. cake. <laughs> we'll be fine. So just before um, I invite Ken to come up and uh, thank Tony on your behalf, so I thought I'd do a little bit of a plug for his book. So it's uh, been covertly hidden in the corner of all the slides, and you've now seen it so many times, you're all going to rush out and buy a copy. Um, it's a year old, and so it's hopelessly out of date, actually. So uh, that's actually quite amusing if you bought it like me when it came out and only got round to reading it at Christmas, and you realize that some of the stuff in it is well out of date against his material. Um, but Tony keeps his website up to date all the time, so he gives lectures like this quite regularly, and a lot of these are on the um, website, and it's actually quite fun to trace how the stories developed just in the last 12 months. So this lecture will be going up on Tony's website. It'll also be on the MB and Smart Grid Forum websites, and I'll send everybody who registered for this lecture a link to that when it's uh, processed. Um, but uh, you really ought, out of kindness, to buy a copy of Clean Disruption on Amazon um, <laughs> and then completely ignore it because it'll be completely obsolete. Um, <laughs> for, 